friends all know that I'm cool I've been this way since high school Cause life's never been sweeter When you're just a cake eater When it comes to hockey, nobody can stop me My high school team, I was playing on the top three Welcome to the Youth Hockey Hub's High School Hockey Podcast Brought to you by Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine Joined today, um, myself, with Danny Ryan, with Tony Scott Hi Danny And Carl East on the phone Good to be here as always, Danny. Uh, yeah, um, did you get snowed in um, this weekend, Carl? Or at least tomorrow it's going to be nuts, too, I'm pretty sure, up there in Duluth. Uh, nothing tomorrow. We got some decent snow this weekend, but here in Duluth we actually know how to clear up snow, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, okay. oh wow. That's a, I think that's a, a statement of city planning, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, in part. Okay. <laughs> Well, well, that's uh, that's good. I'm glad to see that Midnot's uh, donating at least part of its time to that lonely city. Uh, yes. So um, let's get started right away with some apologies. Um, let's start. Tony, um, who do you want to apologize? To? I have no apology this week. I was amazed to go to the message board to see it posted and no comments. Not like you guys are way off on your predictions, uh, your your top tens. There's nothing there, so I have nothing to apologize for, obviously. And I talked to you guys before the show. You guys don't have anything either to apologize for, so this may be the only show where the apo- we are sans apology. <laughs> well, I, I think I yeah, completely agree on this one. What about you, Carl? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to sound good when there have been no games between your last podcast and this podcast, but, you know, we'll take it. <laughs> we, we do sound pretty good and smart, too. I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, everything that we've said is completely true. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it was such a good feeling. Such a good feeling. I would always go into the message board last year and just kind of cringe, like, oh, no, they're not going to like what I said. My feelings are going to get hurt. <laughs> I, I think the worst moment last year is when I called Bram Shear getting a major. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't good. Yeah, that was not yeah. good. That, that was, was a low light. Yeah, that was a definite low light. Low Should have lights. talked to some SCA kids on the glass yeah, that period. Yeah, that was not good. Not good. Okay, well, let's jump right into the meat of it. Um, let's start with a segment um, today that I call Don't Believe the Hype. Oh, don't Believe the Hype! <laughs> Sorry, I like doing the, the, the sound effects there. So we're going to talk about a couple teams, uh, plus or minus, that there's some hype out there on them right now. And sometimes it's bad hype. Yeah, uh, sometimes it's bad hype. Um, so we want to tell you right now, we, we get it from us, don't believe the hype. All right, I uh, like it. I like it. So who's going first? Carl, why don't you kick this one off? Well, let's see. Uh there's a certain team that I think is really overrated, and uh, for some reason, I'm just not too high on them. I don't know why. Well, why might possibly have anything against this team, but I think Grand Rapids is just so thin, you know. <laughs> I love it. A couple of them they're, they're great, you know. Hayden McLaughlin Miller is a great line, but beyond that, you know, it's hard to win a double-A section, a good double-A section, without any depth, depth in scoring. So I think Grand Rapids is overrated. I think much of the discussion has focused on, when we focus on Grand Rapids, is when they won the Bantams three years ago. That has been a legitimate, valid topic. They won it. You know, in Bantams, you're playing much shorter periods, and they had an incredible goaltending streak by Zach Stasekal. And I'm not saying Zach won't have another one, because yeah. he's definitely one of the most athletic goalies, but he's not even the only goalie, great goalie. They have Gabe Holm, too. Yeah. So I think that goaltending is vastly you're vastly undervaluing goaltending in this equation and they they can win the state tournament they can win the whole thing with this equation but if depth is part of the equation there is no doubt elk river is way deeper than them and marshall and east and cloquet that's the most that and we talked about it ad nauseum on the message board and our show <laughs> this is the deepest team possibly in the state yeah and i think yeah. if you look at uh, you know, Grand Rapids could survive in the, t- the state tournament. It's about getting to the state tournament. You don't have TV timeouts no. during the season. You're running two defensemen, uh, really, that are your b- high camp and um, Stamp Stamp Hart. Hart. I mean, those are your two best defensemen that have experience. After that, it kind of goes more downhill. Yep. And even if you take Micah Miller off the Hayne McLaughlin line or, uh, you know, vice versa, you know, sort of thing, it, this still leaves you open. You don't have a third line. You need a third line, bruising line that can go up against a 
first line. And their sophomore class, even people in Grand Rapids will admit, is one of their weaker classes that doesn't have that solidifying force. Like Elk River's got a great sophomore class. They have a great junior class that are solidifying. They don't get that solidifying measure in Grand Rapids from that sophomore class. Don't get me wrong, juniors and seniors are great. But that's kind of where you're missing that extra, that, that pulp, I guess, that they're looking for. They're not getting it. They won't get it, and that's what worries us pundits yes. as a hype producer. You want me to go next on my yeah, hype Yeah, who are you saying? I'm going to go an opposite hype as well. No one talks about, including myself in, in my predictions in my preseason top ten, no one's talking about Lakeville. People like Lakeville South. I'm going to give you another one. Lakeville North, you heard it here first. Believe, don't believe the hype. They're gone away. That team could, will be in the state tournament this year. I don't believe that. I think this is Lake, uh, Lakeville South year. I think that losing Pele and losing Max Johnson, this is going to be this is going to hurt them. This is not a section that is easy to come out of by any stretch. I just I have a hard time believing that the Taylor Schneiders, you know, the Annabex are going to pick up the pieces and the uh, the Pearsons of the world are, are going to pick that up and then jump on it. And I still have question marks from their goaltending. What about you, Carl? I kind of had Tony's pick here because I think the, the thing that I like about Lakeville North is that they have balance. You know, they have a couple of good sc- forwards who can score. They have decent defense. Whereas South, you look at them, it's all defense. It's all defense. They need to find some scoring. And so I, I, I trust North more right now. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I think these kids have been there. Um, I for, for some just weird reason, I just got a weird feeling that South is getting the hype out of coming out of the Braemar tournament. I think North is the one when push comes to shove will be deeper than South, and I think they're they're going to make a run. I think that's the team that will be in the state tournament out of that section. Okay, you guys don't believe the hype on Edina. Everybody, oh, I like this one. It's a good take. This is a good take. Everybody's counting Edina out. Edina's done. Edina didn't make it to the tournament last year. Now they've cut players. Giles didn't put seniors on their team. Blah, blah, blah. No, this is going to be – this is the best hockey town in the state of Minnesota. They have the best talent, usually punch for punch, and can line up against anybody. I really – you can't believe this. And they have one of the best coaches in and, Kurt Giles. And I think the – the black cloud of Dave Langevin leaving yeah. brings in a lot of sunlight, a new fresh breath of fresh air. I think that this is going to be – I think these kids are going to have some fun. And, and realistically, and I know that the the Cretan uh, fans out there aren't going to like this, but realistically, on paper, they have one game to win, and that's at, at Mariucci against the against Bizetta yeah. to go to state. And so it's – and at this point – they're eight nine right now in our yeah. preseasons. They're seven eight, whatever. Yeah. It's a it's a coin yeah. flip. So why is Edina dead if if they can pull together? And we've all seen it. Where we've been around the block a few times. We've seen Edina teams who don't deserve to be there <laughs> make it quite often. So I agree with your don't believe no no arguments on Edina on this one. Well, yeah, I think the big question with Edina is just no. It was a small to us off season. A lot of things happened. How do they pull together now? I think it's going to be as much you know off the ice as on the ice, depending where they go this year. But if you look at any program that loses players as much as Edina does, no other program finds a way to bounce back and look great doing it and find superstars in the mix as well. Uh, this team is going to have some complete superstars with Brinkman on it. Uh, like uh, This is going to be a very good team that you just can't sleep on. And who wants to go to Braemar to play a game? No, I agree with you on that one. Here's one thing about I'm gonna make a statement about Edina just a little bit off, little off uh, the board here. These kids, the, the only knock on Edina, I would say, is that these kids don't really train together. You no. know, they it's like there's 20 different kids going in 20 different directions in the off season, and that's a hard thing for a head coach to bring them back together. If you, I've, I've been in Hermantown in the summer. There's 40 kids out in this back parking lot working out together in the gra- basically these gravelly outdoor rinks. They're working out together all year. They're, those kids in Hermantown are thick as thieves. They, they play for each other. They play for the front of the jersey and all these things. And I think there's, that's the one little thing that if I were an Edina fan or, or someone who's you know didn't believe in Edina, that's the one little thing where I'm like, I'm not sure that these kids can pull it together. Prove me wrong, Edina. That's fine. But that, if I were to point one thing that could be is could be chemistry or how can they will they mesh together? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Uh, Carl, you want to? You have any other ones that you want to lay down on us? Uh, here's one kind of out of left field. How about Section 3A? So for, for the past couple of years, Laverne's been, you know, been the favorite. They've choked, and now, and now they're, you know, big players are gone. And they're kind of off, off the radar. I think Laverne's going to go back to space. I. I have a heart. We talked about this before the show, and I agree. I think that that's the team in 3A that has actually some talent behind the three big big names, you know, Smedsrud, Singzavi, and, and Nelson, these kids that have played in national camps and been, you know, made a name for themselves out there. And there's some other guys behind them that are just as good and probably way hungrier. So I, I like that take on, on Laverne. I think Section 3A is like a roulette wheel that always draws green. It, it, you never know what's going to come out of it, but it's you, you know that whatever you say just is not going to be correct. You know, we predicted Laverne, you know, the last two years, and this has not, you know, played their favor, even though they have been clearly more talented uh, on the ice each year. Yes. So... I, I just I have a hard time seeing them in the tournament just because I don't see any team you know strongly predicting out of that section. I got one for you guys. This one's gonna hurt, Danny. So just get ready. Um, and I don't see. It's funny about it. I don't see them not going to state. I still think your cadets will go to state. It's just they're just too talent laden. But I don't think they're gonna be one of those teams that's gonna knock out they're not going to dominate non-conference and be a top five top ten team they're going to be one of those teams that will make it to state i think every team in section three double a will be unranked outside of a carl's top 15 and they'll just get in and that's my don't believe the hype on st thomas quite yet i think with st thomas you have to look at what the question marks have always been since moving up to double a and that's size you know, this is not a school that traditionally has a lot of size. This year, they don't have size again. I think Robbie Stucker is probably their tallest kid, but he's a twig. You the know. two best players are Peyton and, and, <laughs> and Ray Christie, and those guys are small. Uh, I think they can't ride the Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, wow, that is a slam. His big brother, his little brother's big, though. Robert's a big kid, and I think that they're. I think they're going to go to state. Yes. I just don't believe the hype that they're, uh, they'll be inside the top five this year. Yeah. And if they are, I'm wrong, and I'll be the first to apologize. Yeah. I think we're kind of setting ourselves up for some apologies here on this <laughs> hype show. That's <laughs> – well, then I'll make the major don't believe the hype. Thing. Oh, good. I can't wait. Stillwater. Don't, Ooh, I like it. I like don't, it. Don't believe the hype on Stillwater. I, I believe Stillwater is the Clemson Tigers wow. of high school hockey. They are very good, very talented, but one, they play one good team a year in Louisville, and everybody's still riding them high, and they're going to squeak by into the state, and then people are going to go, yeah, yeah, look at that record. They're really good. They have great point totals. Yeah, well, it's one thing to have, you know, Eight losses in your Edina and you play in the Lake Conference. It's another thing to um, have two losses and play in the Wright County Conference. Or oh, wow. They, don't, they aren't in the Wright County, County Conference. They're in the, what is it? How do we, we're talking about Stillwater, and how do we take a <laughs> slam on the Wright County Conference? <laughs> because it's the Little Sisters and I'm of the I'm telling board. you, the Wright County Conference has got some squads this yeah, year. This Orno year. is good. Bellano is good. You know, obviously Holy Family's good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Carl, what's your take on that? I think the right county conference might be harder than the SEC this year. Which I, is think it, I think you're right. Think yeah. about that. Yeah. Top to bottom. Okay, I'm going to take the headphones off. You guys do the rest of the show, I guess. <laughs> can we can we bring it back to Stillwater? Okay, yes. Okay. I, I'm back on Stillwater. They lose their goaltender. Their other goaltender, Seth Isley's better than Benson. Okay. He was the best goalie in the Elite League. I, I'm just You're just grasping at straws here. This is the number two team in the States. Well, uh, you know, yeah. I'm just saying they won't be the number two team in the state in everybody's eyes when they're in the state tournament. Well, they finished. They got to the third place game last year, and this team is this team is decked out. This is a good squad. I'm yeah, right I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot who made it to state out of Section 5 last year. Was that Blaine? No. Okay, good. I didn't predict that one either. <laughs> okay, um, 
Anybody have any other don't believe the hypes? No, I think we've all got our a pair of them. <laughs> I think we got a great apology <laughs> segment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got well, some hockey to talk about finally. Yeah, finally. Games start on Friday. Um, so let's talk about some games that are actually on Saturday first. Um, first one that I want to talk about is a um, Section 2A versus Section 1AA matchup. The Breck Mustangs um, play Lakeville South. This is going to be a great game. I, I, I think this is – Delano is not, you know, going to get prepared as much as Breck is with an opener because uh, Breck then plays um, at home versus Delano on Tuesday. And so this is a good warm-up for them. To I, I think there. you're right. It's a great warm for them. And this is this game will tell the story for both teams. Is Breck legitimately a third a three the third best team in three in, in single A? And is if Lakeville South can win, that means hey, they're gonna make a statement like, hey, we're as good as anybody in double A because you know that Breck is as good as anybody in double A yeah. in the top. They're a top ten ish, top fifteen ish, you know, they're a Bemidji you know, they're right in that, that the same zone. So I'm excited to see the outcome of this game. I, I'm going, Breck. Or we haven't, we're not doing predictions until later. We're not later. going predictions But if yet. I were to pick on this game, I would go Breck on this one. Carl, I mean, Lakeville yeah. South people are just going to shred me. Carl, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, we're not really sure what to expect out of Lakeville South, but we're going to find out really quickly because their first three games are Breck, Stillwater, and Hermantown. <laughs> I mean, call <laughs> that for a start. Yeah, that's impressive. Well, and, and the other thing is, too, I, I think Breck's a team that you don't want to play early, too, because this is a team that's already going to come with speed on the table. And so they're going to be gelling just on a speed standpoint, and so they're going to be good there. I'm going to go Breck here just because I, I trust the history that Breck brings to the table rather than the unknown that Lakeville South brings. Um, next game, take Breck. You, you take Breck, too? Okay. Uh, next game I want to talk about. This is a big game for Section 4A. Um, it will probably be important for seeding later on in the season because SPA and Matamidi play. This is a, this is probably, you know, this is a grudge match type of game. This is Matamidi does not like playing private schools, sort of thing. Yeah. And, and this is a season that SPA has a lot to prove. Yeah, I think that SPA is the better team right now uh, in November. Uh, I think Matamidi will improve. Uh, easily, I think that SPA is the better team today and will win this game. Um, I was at the game last year. I think that Montemayor had like 14 or 15 seniors on that team. And yeah. They were way deeper. Yeah. And they they won, you know, by a goal or two, but they were clearly the more physical and better hockey team. And I like Montemayor long term, but I like SPA winning this game on whenever the game is. It's this weekend. Yeah, it's Saturday. What do you think, Carl? Yeah, you look at Montevideo, and they, they basically lost all of their scoring from last year. And, you know, they have, they're a deep class A program, so they have Lockley back. They'll be good by the end of the year, but the timing of this game is great for the Zephyrs. Well, in the top end talent that an SPA provides in a Dev McCabe and players like that. It, it, Picciano, Jack Johnson, I mean, this team is. They're going to be loaded. They're going to score a lot of goals this year. Well, and that's the way um, Funk coaches. Funk comes from that St. Thomas Academy uh, coaching tree where it's score. And it's score early, score often, and get as many points on the board in Class A with speed and dump and chase. So I, I see this going SPA's way. So we're all in agreement on those. Mm -hmm. That's why we're not picking them. That's right. Now let's start picking right. some games. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. I smell a turkey trot coming. Mmm, Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, first game of the Turkey Trot, 5 o'clock. Plymouth Ice Center um, is a pretty good matchup in Edina versus Holy Family. Let's throw this one on the table. What are you guys thinking, Tony, you first? There is so much on the line in this game. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, these kids train together in the off season, like I was talking about. They, they, they know each other really, really well. And there's no love loss between – these two programs, because obviously you got, you got the Hankinson and Tabor move over. I mean, there's plenty of Edina kids, plenty of Edina in Holy at the Holy Family camp. Uh, so there's a decent rivalry involved here, which makes for a great hockey game. All their coaches at Holy Family are Edina people. I know, I know. So if you factor all those things in, that just makes for a great hockey game. And then you factor, and you talk, we talked about our non-hype on Edina. They had all the talent, all the Division One kids on that team. Um, 
I think this team. I, I are we picking right now? Pick. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Holy Family. That's 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 the, one of the best teams in the state, and I think I think they're better right now. Cool. Long term, I like Holy Family, but I think Edina's going to come up fired up. They're going to want to show those two players who transferred that they should have stayed, and I could take Edina. I, I'm going to be on your bandwagon too, Carl. History tells me that Holy Family has never won this game. I just don't see it happening. I'm going to see at least, uh, mark my words, there's going to be a five-minute major, ten-minute misconduct in this game because there's going to be some hard hits. I will agree with you on the on the major penalty being called, no question about it. And I I'll even go one step further. I bet there's going to be a bench minor from one of the two coaching staffs. Well, Cause it's just it's going to be heated. You know what I mean? I just it's going to be a heated game, and I I'm I'm excited to hear how it turns out. Well, it can't be Giles because he doesn't talk on the bench. Oh well, I'm not saying either one. I'm just saying <laughs> one of the someone's it's going to get heated. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be from the coach. It could be someone from the other from the bench. I'm just thinking both benches are going to be pretty jacked up for this game. I, I just I Edina doesn't lose this game, and they even though Holy Family is playing well right now in the scrimmages is what we're hearing. I just don't see it happening. Uh, uh, Carl, you think the same way on that? Are we are we taking yeah, a tally on this one? Because yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna take my early lead and I'm gonna win Pickums again this year. Carl, again? <laughs> let's not talk about who won last year for a moment here. I thought I won. <laughs> no, no, no. no In my own little reality, I won the Pickums last year. Yeah. Someone ripped up the standings in the last week. Couldn't handle it. <laughs> Okay, get back on topic, Carl. Why why is Holy Family going to win in your mind? I think going to win. Oh, never oh. mind. Sorry, sorry. I'm trying to get you to I'm, pick. Them. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm the Holy Family guy here. So that was our first game of the picks, yep. right? So I'm going to win that one. All right. Okay, second game of the Turkey Trot um, is going to be Wyzetta versus Maple Grove. I see this as a pretty one-sided um, game. Oh, I, I don't. I see it's going to be a close game, but I'm going to. Before we get into this, I probably call this the "Who Cares" game. I mean, this is like there's a true rivalry on one side of it, and then yeah. this other game. There's no rivalry between these two. There's <laughs> you can get played on pick three. Yeah, this is this is just not a very exciting game. I mean, both teams are fairly vanilla, right? Well, I would say that both have an edge to them when they want to turn that edge on. Yeah, but I, the edge. If we're talking just hockey player for hockey player. Wyzetta is deeper. Wyzetta is going to win the game. But we've seen Wyzetta at any given time can only put up one goal in a game. Wyzetta is so, boring. So I'm going to, because I want to make this interesting picks this year interesting because it really wasn't last year, I'm going to go Maple Grove just to make things interesting because it's really easy to pick Wyzetta. They're the state champions, and they have lots of confidence and lots of great players. But I'm going Maple Grove on this one. Carl? Okay. I'm going to take Wyzetta. It will be a boring, low-scoring game, but I think Wyzetta will scrape it out. Yeah. With special emphasis on the word boring. Yeah, but life after <laughs> life after Hank, I'm, I'm, it's not going to be boring after Hank. You know, just <laughs> we have to uh, give it up. But I, I'm going definitely Wyzetta on this one. They just have too much talent across the board that they're just going to weigh heavy by the third period. And goaltending is going to stand strong. I, I see Wyzetta. We still don't know who the Maple Grove goaltender is going to be. Are they going to bring the freshman <laughs> in? They could have a freshman goaltender. Hey, that's a four-year starter in my book. Yeah, <laughs> it could be interesting. It could be interesting who starts that game. Uh, throw, his, throw him right into the fire, <laughs> you know? Oof. Yeah. And he's good. Trust me. He wouldn't <laughs> be playing varsity if he weren't a good goalie, but still. Yeah. Okay, Um. so that's our picks for the Friday turkey trot. I guess who wins the turkey trot, Tony? Who wins the turkey trot? Well, because I picked Holy Family. Yes. Holy Family wins this going away. Holy Family wins it. Okay, Carl? I mean, I think they could run in time. Wow. They could get one of these two games in running time. They're that good. Okay, Carl? Oh, well, that yeah, and, and I believe... Wimble. Yeah, I believe Wyzetta, too. I think Wyzetta wins the first night, and I think Edina wins, but then Wyzetta carries on that tradition that they just crushed them last year, but Edina will, you know, get better later in the season. All right. What are my, we got a couple more doozies. I think we got your alma mater on the t on the docket, right? The game I'm most looking forward to. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the St. Thomas Academy versus Minnetonka at Pagel on Saturday night. Um, for me, I like this game. I think this is an intriguing matchup in a lot of ways. 
I'll start this one off. I think this is a must-win game for the Cadets. And here's why. The Cadets have not started strong in Class 2A since they've moved up. Last year with the debacle, barely beating Rosemount in the first game. Two years ago, I, I think they lost to Holy Angels. I mean, this is... This is a St. Thomas team that struggles early on right now, and they need to find an identity quickly in order to succeed this season. And they're in one of the toughest environments to start off the season in Pagel against a decent YZ team, uh, Manitaka team. And so I think this is a must-win for St. Thomas, and I don't think they do it. So you're taking the skippers? I'm taking the uh, skippers. I can't argue with you, but before I make my pick, why you gotta be hating on Rosemont? Rosemont had a good year last year. They either won or finished second in one of the Schwann's Cups. They had some second, success. I'm not making they fun had, of they Step. They got to the Final Four. Didn't they make it to the Final Four of the of three A? Oh, oh, so oh, okay. This is not a bad team. I mean, that's that wasn't a bad team last year. So stop ripping on the Irish, all right? <laughs> all right. So uh, back to you got that out of you. Uh, right I got guys? that out of me. I was like, oh, hey, whoa, whoa, all right. <laughs> Um, I'm going skippers. This is an easy one. They are deeper than St. Thomas. They're more talented than St. Thomas. This is one of the most talented teams in the state, and I think they will win by at least a field goal. Carl? Uh, I'm going to go with Minnetonka. Okay. So did we go all the way through? Yeah, we went all. We agreed. All. Wow. I hate when we all agree. You know, when we all agree, you know what's going to happen, right? St. Thomas. St. Thomas is going to win. That's the Goocher. Oops. My <laughs> <I> know. <bad. laughs> well, you, it would have been a good Goocher if you would have picked last, but you did. You picked first. So. Well, I just I think St. Thomas, This is, we never play well at Pagel. Um, if the student section comes out in force in Pagel. And they will because it's Saturday night of Thanksgiving. They want to get out. And, and Well, I've seen the opposite there. Know, and and when, when the fans are not involved in that rink, it is a cold, cold rink. And, and it, quiet. And it, it, it is not fun to be there. But when, when this rink is rocking, I remember uh, when Isaacson was for St. Thomas and we were going to against um, Coda and Gardner and stuff like that. That good it, teams. It, it was too rank around, uh, too deep around the whole ledge there. It was pretty cool. So I think you look at uh, if Pagel's rocking, this is going to be a fun environment to be a part of. I will do a programming note. I'll be broadcasting the Grand Rapids Minnetonka game exclusively on Youth Hockey Hub. Next, not this. The following week. So. Yep. That's a big night, Hermantown Wise at the exact same time. Yeah, so I Does it get any better than that? Yeah, in March. Well yeah, and I'm talking for December <laughs> on a Friday night in December. <laughs> doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> okay. Anybody have anything else to add? Nothing else to add. We're we're all tied up with all of our predictions. Mm hmm We're ready to roll. I couldn't be any more excited for uh the season. Carl? In the words of Mike Randolph, earn your turkey this week, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Uh, thank you to our sponsor, Mayo Sports Health Medicine. Okay, and this has been the Youth Hockey Hubs High School Hockey Podcast. Thanks for listening. Last night my kid tore up his league. He had a hat trick right up his sleeve. Coach said he's never seen that. Gemini Athletics going to have to stitch the seat patch. I've got Ferraris, Maseratis, drive all over the place. I drink martinis, never seen these looks all over their face.